Hello everybody, E here, back again with another top five list. Um, this time we're talking about Richard Lehman books. Uh, before we get started, I want to throw this out there. Richard Lehman is not an author that you're going to find discussed in uh, uh, collegiate circles. Uh, he was an author, uh, he died 2001 on uh, Valentine's Day, actually, in 2001. Uh, he passed away. He left behind a, an immense body of work. Um, the guy is a lot of fun to read, but he is really, really rapey. Um, every single one of his books has some kind of cringeworthy either rape, pedophilia, something in it, nar uh, not narcolepsy, <laughs> um, necrophilia, crap like that. It's really, really intense stuff. Um, he wasn't really a horror writer as much as he was, um, even, he's even, he even said this in interviews, he was a crime writer. But some of his, some of his stuff did have monsters in it, like The Cellar, uh, and it, the whole Beast House series. Um, but today we're going to talk about my five favorites. Um, another thing I want to throw out there is, a lot of people, it gets tossed around just as much as, this guy's the next Stephen King, where, um, Really schlocky, crappy horror writers, especially indie horror writers, like to tout that they're the next Richard Lehman. Um, usually, what they mean is uh, that they are their writing is very simplistic, and those people usually their books are full of errors. Um, Richard Lehman was a very technical writer, but his writing, like Jack Ketchum, was very simplistic. He chose words very carefully, and the editing was on point. Um, so anybody that pops up saying, I'm the next Richard Lehman, or when somebody says, hey, this guy's the next Richard Lehman, I usually don't pay attention because what they mean is he has the schlocky fun, but the writing is simple. Anywho, so jumping into it, not right into it because I just got through going on a spiel, number five is Island. I had a load of fun with this book. Um, I've, I've read this one twice. <laughs> uh, there's... If you like any of the old uh, like exploitation movies where people get stuck on an island or any any of those things, if you like people getting stuck in situations where they they have no way out, this one's for you. Um, it is one of his longer works. In fact, I think most of the ones I have are longer works. This one comes in right at 500 pages. Um, so there's there's number five, Island. Next is for the longest time it was one of my favorite horror novels of all time just because of the way it's structured and that is Endless Night. It jumps back and forth between um, Jody uh, and Simon. Jody has just, her whole family's been murdered, I think it's her whole family, I think maybe her brother survives too, I'm not sure, but I know she survived, well of course she survives, she's the main character, but um, the, this crew of Killers show up at her house and kill everybody. She gets away. And then the crew of killers tells uh, this guy, Simon, that's killing with them, that he has to find Jody and, or else they are going to kill... I'm not spoiling anything. It's all in the back of the book. Um, they are going to kill his family. So, But it jumps back and forth between his audio recordings um, and her... I think it's either third person or first person. No, it's third person. So you go from Jody third person to Simon first person's record first person recordings. Next up we have Richard Lehman. Oh, of course Richard Lehman in the dark. This one's fun. I like any um, and you're going to you're going to there's going to be a theme here. I like uh, scavenger hunt stories. Road trip, scavenger hunt, um, island, I like people getting stuck places. This one is a lot of fun because I think it's it happens over the course of five nights. Again, it is another uh, yes, another 500-page book. Um, it's long, but it doesn't feel like it. It feels maybe like two, three hundred pages because it's so much fun. This girl's trying to she keeps getting these mysterious packages, and as the nights go on, things get more and more and more extreme. All right, next up we have Night in the Lonesome October. I fell in love with this book mainly because when I was a kid, I used to just go out at night and just walk the streets. And that's pretty much what this book is about, but some crazy stuff happens. And I'm not going to spoil it for you. This is one of Layman's biggest surprises. Um, it's also one of his coolest titles, I think, Night in the Lonesome October. Alright, I think it's also a name of another book. Put down in the doobly-doo who wrote the other one named Night in the Lonesome October. Last but not least, um, when people read my... Uh, my debut novel, Bay's End, uh, they bring up that it reminds them of The Stand. 
Uh, I didn't have the stand in mind when I wrote that one. Of course, I am a huge Stephen King fan. If you're if you watch the channel, you know that already. But there's two books that inspired that one, and this is one of them: the Traveling Vampire Show. Um, what's so great about the once again, it's got a show in it. And I'm big on theatrics and things like that. The show is really cool, but it's the Layman did such a great job with the three main characters. I think it's Rusty, Slim, and someone else. Anyways, but I read this. I was very... Uh, I, I went into this with trepidation because I don't like vampires at all. Um, but I don't want to spoil anything for you, but there's not many vampires in it. The story follows the kids, and then you have the show, and then you end up with one of the coolest twist endings I've ever read about. So, I guess that's it. Those are my top five Richard Lehman books. So until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another top five list. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!